church. Amen. 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 There are there are some of us who can only see that. There are some of us who our desire is to be with Jesus. Yes, sir. Amen. See, we see past the thing. We see past the thing. We see past the glory. We see past the temporal whatever you want to call it. And our eyes are focused on Jesus. And, 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 and to be focused on Jesus means that you know that there is something more important than anything on this planet. Jesus. I want to share with you what the Lord shared with me in. And I hope that I can present this in such a way that, that um, you can understand it and that you may, we may benefit from it. But I want to start off saying that up until the coming of Jesus Christ, there was only one door to heaven. There's only one way, one door to heaven. And that door said Jew only. So that if you were not Jewish, you couldn't walk through the door to get to heaven. You had no way. In fact, the, the Bible, the, the, the Bible declares that before Jesus, when you see this racism stuff that you see in the world, I want you to understand something. And as God sees it, there's only two races. Jewish race and the Gentiles. Everything that's in this Bible is based on Gentiles and Jews. All right. It has nothing to do with black, white, tall, short, whatever. Either you are a descendant of Abraham or you're not. All right. You, you must be a physical descendant of Abraham to be considered a Jew. Or you're not. All right. And when, when, when God first dealt with the nation of Israel, he, he let all the other nations do whatever they wanted to do. And the Bible says there was a time that the whole world, other than Jews, were without Christ. If you don't have Jesus, what does that mean? They, they were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. In other words, they didn't have the ordinances. They didn't know what they were supposed to do. They didn't know how to approach God. They didn't know how to make God happy. They didn't know how to, 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 to make him not angry at them anymore. The Bible says, and they were strangers of the covenant of promise. In other words, they had no idea what the Ten Commandments were. All right. So if you don't know what the Ten Commandments are, you're breaking them every day. Even though you, even if you do know. <laughs> and the Bible says, finally, having no hope. Yeah. We who are non Jews have no hope. The door that led to heaven said, you only. Mm -hmm. So try as you might. Be as nice and kind and loving and giving as you can. You ain't getting in. Because the Bible says having no hope and without God in this world. You who are Christians right now, can you imagine not having God right now? Mm -hmm. No. No. Can you imagine walking every day and not having the Spirit of God in you and knowing that God is with you? Yeah, right. Walking as zombies? Mm -hmm. right, right. Dead? Yeah. Unable to hear from God, talk to God, speak to God? Mm -hmm. Unable to love God and be loved by God? Mm -hmm. Without hope and without God in this world? It was a mystery. The mystery was how in the world is God going to save us? All right. And I wasn't. I didn't. I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth, mm -hmm. and I can't change mm -hmm. how I was born. Mm -hmm. I can't change the family I was born to. I can't change the color. I can't yeah. change anything. Yeah. So I was without hope. I didn't have a silver spoon in my mouth. Ephesians 3. Well, we in 
trouble. We can't make it. messages find you in your heart and, and maybe even and the reason why I said that is because I, I want you to know that if God can change a person like me mm -hmm. what do you mean <laughs> I will tell you all when to say amen <laughs> that is not the time to say amen <laughs>
Christ has already freed you from sin. Oh, and if you're still sinning, it's because you need to a big chain on your foot and you can't move forward. But the truth of it is, is who God has set free. Uh-huh. Yes. 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 It's free indeed. Amen. So in your mind, you think you're a slave. Yes. But God says, I'm already free. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. And if you look down, you'll see a rope and not a chain. Amen. Woo! Amen. What can a big elephant do to a little rope? Tear it up. Why ain't y'all standing? <laughs> Snapping. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord, we thank you. What's that song? Break every, Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every rope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't change. Break the ropes too. Rope. So you see that song? Don't say change. <laughs> Break every rope. to love you unconditionally forever. He wants to wipe away every tear yes. that has come from your eyes. He wants to free you from everything. He wants to love you like you've never been loved before. Yes. He wants to walk up to you and give you a hug. Amen. And talk to you and speak to you. And, yes. and like sometimes you, you talk to me after about three hours and I do it. I do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just read it. You read it. <laughs> <laughs> about it, but a parable in Matthew 22. Can you go with me to Matthew 22? Jesus speaks about a parable. A parable is nothing but an earthly story that has heavenly meaning. I hope I'm talking to somebody today. I hope I'm talking to somebody telling you that there are no chains that are bound in you anymore. There's only ropes. You have already been set free. And in your mind, you think that you're still a slave or locked into this thing, but really, Jesus wants his house filled because his son is going to have a wedding. The Bible says in Matthew 22, verse 1, and read it with me, and I pray that we get understanding from the Holy Spirit. Uh, 22, verse 1, Jesus answered and said to them, again, by parables, and said, The kingdom of heaven is rose on the like a certain king, which he made what? He sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and what? Did not not come. Come. So the Jews, he called the Jews to come. Hey, hey, there's a wedding for my son. And they come. Oh. Imagine having a wedding feast for your son, Jesus oh. Christ, and they don't want to come. Oh. Wow. Who don't want to come? The Jews don't want to come. Oh. Right? Oh. And, and they gave excuses. The Bible says in verse 4, again, he sent forth another service, said, tell them which are bidden, behold, I have prepared dinner, mm. oxen, and my fatting wings are killed. And all things are ready to come into the marriage. Mm. I believe this is the marriage of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. But they made light of it and went their ways. One was his farm, another was his merchant. And the re re remnant took his servant and entreated them spitefully and slew them. In other words, they killed the messenger. Mm. I'm the messenger. <laughs> I'm the mailman. I didn't write this. See, so you gotta be careful. They, they'll kill you. Yes. And the Bible says in verse seven. But when the king heard this, he watched the father and sent forth his armies and destroyed these what? Burned, burned, burned up their cities. You know what? The Jews, along with the Romans, killed Jesus. Oh. The messenger. Oh. And in seventy A.D. God let Roman General Titus burned the city of Jerusalem. 
Verse 8. And when he had said to the servants, the wedding, the wedding is ready. But they that were bidden were not worthy. Not worthy. The people I like, they weren't worthy. So he's got this big, look, this big marriage supper already ready for Jesus. Mm. Food for days. Mm. But nobody there. Imagine having a party and nobody showed up. Mm. Verse 8, and he said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which have been we don't not have worthy. Go ye therefore to the highway, and as many as you find. In other words, go to the corners, go to the streets, go to the highway, yes, sir. go to the clubs, go to the bar, go to the crack house, go to the whorehouse. Anybody who wants to come, go to the liquor store. So the first ten. So the servants went out into the highways and gathered Christopher, <laughs> David, Daryl, <laughs> <laughs> they found you on the streets, didn't they? Oh, yeah. In the gutters. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. George found the George in the gutters. <laughs> Wes? Mike? <laughs> Are y'all listening to me? Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes, sir. yes sir. Went out into the world, the streets, the crack houses, the poor houses, and found people. The others could have came, but they weren't worthy to come. So God said, bring me anybody. Yes. Bring me the whole whosoever. Right, right, right. Yeah. Are there any whosoever's in this yeah. church today? Yeah. Yeah. Whosoever what? Will. Yeah. Whosoever will show up. Yes, sir. And the Bible says, I'll be there. listen to us. Verse 10, so the servant went out to the highways and gathered together as many as he found. The bad, the good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. Mm -hmm. And when the king came and to see the guests, he saw it was there was a man that did not have a wedding garment. The wedding garment is the righteousness of Christ. In other words, he didn't have the Holy Spirit. And he said to him, Friend, how come is thou hither to the, having the wedding garment? For he was speechless. Then said the servant, he came to the servant, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him out of darkness. Mm -hmm. And there shall be weeping and gashing of teeth. So many are. Many are what? Call. Call. Mm -hmm. Let me make it very, perfectly clear. If you're here, if you're here to serve, you're called. Mm -hmm. Don't wait for some people to come. Yeah. They need this lead. Why are people leaving on the sermon? Sign doesn't say Jew only. Oh. What does it say? Whosoever will. Whosoever will. Whosoever will. Whosoever will call on the name of the Lord. Amen. Shall we say? When you're a pastor, I think, and, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you like this. Uh, I, I used to. No, no, no one in my past, in other, in other words, when I say it like this, because I'm trying to reach somebody right now in this church. Um, I say it like this. When God called me to be a minister, a pastor, I asked him, I said, have you not seen my resume? Have you, have not, have you not seen what I've been and what I've been? How many people I've done it to? Mm -hmm. 
Wow. <coughs> Come on, Pastor. Over and over. And, and, and that bothered me because I kept saying to myself, well, there has to be a whole bunch of people better than me who have done less sin than me. There has to be a whole bunch. Nobody in this church, but there has to be a whole bunch of people in this world. I'm just joking. <laughs> And I'm going to tell you why I say that. We say God send us whosoever. Yes. What do we ask him to send us? Word to the word. Send us the who? Yes. Word to the word. We ain't scared of y'all. Right, right, right. Send us the crackhead. Yes. Yes. Send us the alcoholic. Yes. Yes. Send us the fornicator. Yes. Yes. Send us the liar. Yes. 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 Huh? Cheaters. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Send us anybody. We don't care. We love you. Because the power of God is greater than the power of Satan. That's right. Love. The love. And, and, and I'm trying to, to, to help you to understand that you ain't the worst of the worst. Yeah. Amen. You ain't even close to the worst of the worst. Yeah. Right. 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 You are a rookie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, for, I'm a professional. Yeah. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is, I ask God because it troubled me. I say, God, why did you choose me? You know what I've done. And, 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 he, and he said, he said, he said, son. He said, if I called you the captain of the boat from America to Africa, and a storm rose up, he says, who would you rather be in the boat with? A captain that's been through many storms. <laughs> Or a captain that's done almost every sin? Or would you rather go with a captain that's never been through any sin? I can look at you and tell what sin you're doing. I've already done it. And I'm here to tell you that if he can set me free, he can set you free too. And I feel free. That's us. That's us. If I was to take you back, and I wish I could, I, I, I really do. And we were, to, and, I, and I kind of spoke a little bit about a dip in a Sunday school. If I could take this whole church, I wish I could, to Israel. But not today, but 2,000 years ago. And we would be walking up, and we'd see Jesus on the uh, Mount of Olives, and he's, he's, he's facing the people, and he's teaching them, and we'd see a Galilee behind him, and, and he's giving them the attitudes, and, and we would walk up as a, as a group of, Gentile. Jesus, and and, 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 and turn, would you turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 15, verse 23? Jesus would see us coming, and as we approached, Jesus wouldn't pay us any attention. And, and, and as we approached the, 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 the group of Jews that were sitting there being taught by Jesus, they would be uncomfortable by our presence, and they would probably, you know, move over and screw away and try to stay away. They would want to, they wouldn't want close contact with anyone, because remember, the, the, the salvation was only for the Jews. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and and I'm gonna tell you right now, you, 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 and I know you, you'll have to read the scripture to see it. Jesus wasn't preaching a message to us; he was preaching a message to the Jews. He would look at us, and, and, and we would we would not matter. But the mystery was that he was going to bring the Apostle Paul to come and teach us. It just wasn't time yet. So when the fullness of time came, he, he got Paul to preach grace. But here, but give me, let me give you an example. Verse of Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. He says, but he answered and said to him, I am sent, but what? Unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In other words, what is he saying? 
I'm only sent to the Jews. I'm preaching to the Jews. I'm giving parables to the Jews. I'm not, I'm not preaching to Gentiles. In fact, it ain't your turn yet. You have to wait until the Apostle Paul gets up. And, 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 and this lady, she was a Canaanite, but she was persistent. I love her. Verse 26. Okay? From verse 25. But she came and worshipped him and saying, Lord, but help me. Help me. But he answered and said, it is not meat to take the children's bread and cast to what? Oh. I don't know if you can read this like I'm reading it. He just called me what? <laughs> Y'all dogs. That's what he said. Right? right. right? Yeah. So get in your mind that Jesus didn't come for us. Amen. But he's the door for us. All right. Amen. Amen. And look what Jesus said, verse 28. Jesus answered there and said, oh, woman. What? Great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even now as it will. And their what? And their daughter was made, and her daughter was made whole. And their what? So because she pressed into Jesus. Was the last time you pressed into Jesus? You know, I, I, I tell you, there was one uh, uh, time that I really needed something in my life, and I asked Jesus for it. And I'm matured now. Uh, I would I pray to Jesus morning, noon, and night. I would warn you. I, I just prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And people would come to me and they say, You're here with us, but you're not here with us. And they were right, because in my mind I was praying, I could see you, I could talk to you, but in my mind I was somewhere else. And when you ever get to the point where you're praying constantly, like without ceasing, right? And you wear Jesus down. I love it because Jesus came to me and he gave me, gave me the answer to my question. And now, as I have matured, I just ask him once. Don't have to keep asking him. When it's time for him to answer, don't answer. And I'm mature enough to know that whatsoever he do. Is all right with me. Amen. Amen. So let's talk. And, and I'll, the reason why I'm pressing this out is because we read the, the Apostle Paul. I'm going to wrap this up in a few more verses. We'll wrap this up. Okay? Ephesians 3, verse 7. We're just going back to Ephesians 3. Wrap this up. Does anybody in this room want to break a rope? Yeah. 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 Anybody in this church? Want to press into God? Amen. Anybody in this church want to know that even though you've done what you've done, God can still use you in a mighty way? Amen. If God can take a person like <laughs> Eric and get him in the front row. <laughs> He says, wherefore I was made a minister. Am I in the right place? Yes. Yes. According to the gift of grace God given to me by the effectual work of his power. In other words, God made him the minister of grace. What, what, what dispensation are we in? Grace. grace. Verse 8. Unto me who am less than the least of all the saints is this grace. In other words, he says, I am the, the, the gutter. See, the, the, the one thing about Jesus, and when you get to know him, like the, uh, John the Baptist says, I must what? Decrease. Decrease. And he must. Decrease. What am I saying? 
If you keep talking about your problem, mm. you increase it. Mm. And because Jesus is decreasing. Mm. If you say God is good, mm. and, and, and I love God, and no matter what God has sent me through, I'm going to Amen. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you talk about your problem, lift yourself up. <laughs> Look what the Bible says. Uh, we'll wrap this up. God says, and, and, and Paul was a Jew. Paul says in verse 8, Now to me who am least of the and who am less of the least of the saints. See, he, he's, he's saying, I'm a, I'm a low Peter, Paul, all of them. Is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable what? Jesus Christ. In other words, what if God told me to stand out in front of the church and just have a sign? Right? That would humble me to the most, right? Humble you too. Walk back and forth. But we need to be humble. Yes. That he can raise us up in new yes. time. Right. Yes. And, and, and before I knew my calling, I used to always say, Lord, I know you want me to do something. What is it? And he would never tell me. And then I got myself in a situation. And I said, God, you know what? I don't care what you tell me to do. All right. Okay. I'll do it. That's right. Amen. And it's amazing that then he told me what he wanted me to do. <laughs> <laughs> After I said I'll do anything, I said, well, come on. All right. <laughs> God is good. God is good. Mm -hmm. So Paul had to teach the dog. Mm. Not my words, right? The Bible says, and we'll wrap this up in the next four verses, and to make men see which is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God. In other words, the door was closed to us, and it was hidden in God, and God wasn't coming in. He says, who created all things by who? Jesus Christ. To the intent now, and to the principalities and powers of heavenly places, might be known by the church of the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus, and then we have boldness and access and confidence by faith to him. In other words, the mystery was this. Jesus Christ has come to save us. <coughs> Black, white, short, tall, dog. Jesus, anybody. If you can't get, now that, now that the door says anybody, you still have to come to Jesus. So even if you are a Jew, you, it doesn't mean you automatically walk in. You better know Jesus. Now, now, now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna call altar call, but right now, um, I want the for real people to come up, not the fake people. <laughs> I want the real people who really are going through something and who really need you.
confess with your mouth and believe in your heart thou shall be saved God didn't come in this world to condemn this world but by him he came in this world to save the world the reason why he can't save the world is because the world loves darkness rather than Bible says, for God so loved the world, he sent his only God, that whomever believeth in him shall not perish, but have, help me y'all, do you want everlasting? just ask the lady in her persistence her persistence in petitioning you Lord God that even the crumbs is worth something so Father we come to you with our petition And we want to be persistent, Lord God, of knowing that if you would speak the word to us, that in a moment you would change whatever our situations are. So, Father, speak the word. We open our hearts in our minds to you, Lord God. Speak the word in our situation, Lord God. Speak the word, Lord God. Speak the word to our bodies. Whatever the ailment is, Lord God. Whatever the disease is, Lord God. Speak the word. Speak the word in our life, Lord God, in our family life, Lord God. Whatever the situation is. If it be husband against wife, wife against husband, wife against children, husband against children, children against their parents, Lord God. Speak the word. Lord, speak the word to them who don't know you. That they come to the table, Lord God, looking for crumbs, Lord God. They're tired of the road they've been going in, Lord God. They're tired of being bound by things, Lord God. Speak the word. <laughs> Father, we thank you that you sent your son to be the door. And we can come. Father, we trust, Lord God, that whatever we have in our mind that is hindering us, Lord God, we lay it at your feet. Father, we ask that you would move in our behalf, Lord God. Give us the ability to, Father, if we need to do something, Lord God, allow us to do it. If we need to confess it, Lord God, allow us to confess it, Lord God. 
but show us what we need to do, Lord God. Father, we come to you, Father, just as the pastor said, whatever you say, Lord God, I will do. out, Lord God, it will accomplish that which is pleased. So we trust you and we believe, Lord God, and we're waiting for the outcome and the manifestation in the physical of it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. decision to follow Christ. Speak these words after me. God, I know I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. I'm sorry for those things that I've done. Lord, I turn away from them things and I ask for forgiveness. Father, I accept your son for what he did on the cross. And I believe he died for my sins. And I believe on the third day that he rose up again. And he's standing on the right hand of you, Lord God. For my behalf. I accept the work he's done. Now, Father, I'm through with everything Satan has given me and thrown after me and what he has all to do. I'm done with it. Satan, I don't want it no more. I don't want to do it no more. I don't want to think it no more. I'm through with you. Father, I will follow after you. Thank you. I receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Go with the peace and love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Brother Avon. May we all raise our right hand. Now may the Lord watch between me and me. May the Lord watch between me and me. While we are absent, walk with another. While we are absent, walk with another. And may the church say, Everybody, everybody, tomorrow, we're going to start making bags for the big pantry on Saturday. So we'll be here at 8 o'clock.